Hello everybody and welcome to another RCT2 review stream. Today we are going to look at Lisevarg by Lagom. Uh, this is a recreation of the real life park in Gothenburg, Sweden. Let's uh, zoom out and take a look at this whole thing. So this uh, is a really nice park in real life and honestly one of my favorite parks. I had the pleasure of visiting last year for the first time and spent two days here and at their park hotel. And uh, it's a lovely park, so highly recommend it if you ever get a chance to make it here. Uh, but let's take a look at the RCT version. Uh, this came out about four years ago, so it's not completely up to date with some of the newer things. Um, but uh, based on the time that it was built, it was very accurate. Uh, this was a spotlight winner on New Element, so uh, another uh, showcase of the quality of the park. So let's dive on in and take a look. We're going to start at the entrance, and then we'll go around and look at some of the exterior stuff later. Uh, you can see the um, uh, the trams uh, all around here, uh, which are really cool. Those are here and running and everything. Uh, so we're going to start out with this uh, cool entry, um, kind of iconic entry element. Um, really true to the, the real life park. I kind of like how these little circular pits uh, frame over top of the, the ticket booths. Um, so very neatly done there as you get into the park and the park is kind of divided up into two halves there's the hill which is kind of everything up here on the hill and then there's all the flat section here and there's a giant midway down the center of it so we're going to go uh, walk on down that midway but we'll start up the hill a little bit here where we have the um, theater space here which has these kind of three little domes in front and the uh, big dome in the, in the middle there just really beautiful architecture uh, up here and then uh, the landscape planters and everything are done pretty well. I think the the landscaping as an overall hole on the mountain is maybe something that holds us back just a little bit but the um, the planters and things like that I really like such as these little um, flowers up on the wooden blocks. Uh, on the other side of the um, the midway here we have our little uh, theater uh, here with the stadium uh, seating and then the uh, stage set up on this side. I really like the uh, truss over top with the lights and everything and this great circular building in the back um, and just using the monorail track uh, it just it sits really nicely in there and just it a lot of times track architecture has the um, difficulty of standing out from everything else but I don't feel like this one does I kind of like these little vertical bits around there too just to break it up a little bit so right here we have a, the really large outdoor uh, theater venue. So this is where uh, they do a lot of the concerts. Uh, there's a beautiful fountain back here. Um, and then this is uh, their signature restaurant in the park. This is uh, Virtus. Uh, I ate there uh, on our trip. and It was fantastic. So highly recommend it if you get a chance to go. Um, so here we kind of move into the park proper, get past a lot of the um, kind of theater type venues and uh, we kind of look at two sides. We're going to start out here on the flat and then we're going to go up the mountain because in my opinion there's a lot more interesting stuff up on the mountain. So there's this cool sort of iconic space frame element here in blue uh, that's been there for quite a while. Um, and then out here in the kids area, this is the first bit that you get to. So this area is probably the most significant thing that is different now than it is in this park. Uh, so this was very much redone. Um, Lisa Berg's uh, mascots are rabbits, and they kind of redid this area into the uh, the rabbit um, rabbit hollow type area, uh, Kanan and Kanina, which I believe are Swedish for rabbit, uh, and uh, it's, it's done very well. But this was a representation of what it looked like four years ago. So here's a nice little car ride on this side. Here's a little um, uh, kind of boat ride that goes through. And then a small little coaster here. So this is Circus Express, a um, little uh, Tivoli Medium, I think it was, uh, that wraps around here. I do like the little multicolored cars. This is a cool little detail here with the piano uh, on the stage. That's pretty darn well done. Um, over here we have the bumper cars. And uh, it's, it's a nice way to use the 4x4 four four bumper cars, but do it in such a way that it looks like it's a larger space. I think that's, that's very nicely done cool little uh, windmill here and then a uh, static rock and tug ride here it's like a little kids disco um, but that's a good way to recreate that uh, now we also have the little carousel on this side and kind of wrapping up some of the kids area stuff there's uh, these uh, little frog hoppers here little teacups ride and then this other uh, 
other ride here in the middle uh, as well. So there's a bunch of different um, you know, shopping and dining venues. So the Midway Court sort of crosses right here. And we have this little strip of, of shops on either side, um, a couple of merchandise shops and some candy things and um, just other little bits and pieces. Nicely done here, some good architecture. It's not like crazy detailed, but it's uh, enough that I think you can kind of get an idea of the style. And it's done well enough that I, I do like the look. Um, the color variation is good. I think one of the challenges with this park is that it's very green, uh, especially with Helix uh, Coaster up here on the, the hill. Uh, so up under here we have the uh, um, other little um, bumper cars type ride. Uh, really liking the structure with the centerpiece here and the trim around it. I just like those deco elements. And this uh, cool little fountain here, which I don't think exists anymore. I think that's since been replaced. Um, and then there's a little kind of restaurant area here. Um, before we get into uh, another section of rides, there's a mirror maze uh, back here, which uh, this has some pretty cool uh, facade elements. This uh, it's like a crystal palace thing, which I kind of like these little details here um, on that. And then this diagonal building with diagonal roofs is, is very cool. So uh, here we have the uh, jukebox ride. So this is uh, a little classic flat ride. And then on this side here is the, uh, the wave swinger. Um, this area has since had a uh, B&M uh, vertical drop, drop coaster kind of come through here. So the, the drop kind of hits right around here and pops out, and loops up and over, and replaced uh, Cannon, which is this coaster here, um, which we'll get to in just a second. Um, so actually, as we do continue along here, let's cross the river and let's take a look at all this. So the first coaster we look at here will be Cannon. So here we'll catch it mid-launch. Up and over this pretty wide stretch top hat. Um, this ride is tough to do in the game. It's way more compact than this. Um, as in, like, this brake run should probably be another six or so tiles over. Um, but it's hard to do in the game considering this roll is more or less diagonal. Uh, and it goes through the loop there. So it's tough to get that to sit right and uh, and everything. So this is a, a fair attempt at it. it it's wide and it, it doesn't quite look the best. But... I also don't quite know how you're meant to do it much better. I do like the support structure because this support spanned the uh, river uh, here, so there was nothing actually in the river. Uh, it was pretty nicely set there, and then the queue line did go through the um, space here. Another one of the things that I like uh, is for uh, this section of track, in, in real life, this is by rail track, so this is just a two tube track rather than the three, uh, and there are more supports on that than there are on the tri rail because the track is weaker. So that was well done in that um, setup, but I wish he would have done the merge there since um, that I think would have made it look a little nicer. And we're already doing the merges elsewhere with um, uh, with the uh, inversions, but nicely done uh, throughout. So this ride is since removed, uh, replaced by um, Valkyria, the new B&M vertical drop coaster. This coaster is now sitting in Iowa and is meant to be going into a park called Lost Lagoon, uh, which is meant to open next year. So we'll see if that does indeed happen. Uh, it uh, seems to be likely, so that's pretty exciting. Uh, so on this side, we have a Burger King and um, just some other little shops and stalls, a couple of game stalls on the way, and then uh, over here we have the uh, swing ride. So uh, now there's a large Intamin gyro swing uh, here, uh, which is uh, very well done. It's called Loki. Uh, it's incredibly well put together and has some really neat theming to it. I mean, overall, Leesburg's been raising the quality of their theming um, over the last few years, so it's definitely looking good. All right, well, let's jump over into this next coaster here, as this one tops the lift. This is Balder. So Balder was, um, I believe, the original Intamin prefabricated wooden coaster. So this, unlike other wooden coasters, this track was fabricated off-site in sections like a steel coaster and was bolted together on site. It was meant to be a smoother ride experience and easier to put together. Um, I can attest it was a very smooth ride. There was a lot of airtime in it. Um, maybe didn't quite live up to the expectations that I think it had back when it had first come out, but there's a lot stronger things that have come out since. Uh, but that's not to say I didn't enjoy it. It's a really good ride. This is another tough one to do in the game. Um, so he's going with the uh, steep lift, which I think is a fair choice, and the uh, kind of diagonal drop. 
uh, here. It's really kind of fits into this overall like, oval shape here and has some crossovers back and forth, which you can't easily do with the lack of diagonal adjustability in the game. So uh, I think you can be happy with this. And I do like these coverings using the car ride and the wooden coaster. I think those are both really well done. Then as we loop back around here, so we get to the, uh, the uh, rapids ride. And this is a pretty impressive rapids ride. So there's a lot going on here. So you can queue up through and enter into the, the station in the pretty big show building here. And then uh, the whole thing pops out and just has a uh, pretty substantial attraction. Like it actually takes up a lot of the room in the park uh, on the lower side here. So really well done. Um, and it's it's done well without being overdone. I mean, there's a lot of the 1K rocks and it does get kind of repetitive. I think that's the challenge with Rapids Rides in this game is trying to keep them interesting enough since I, I don't really think there's enough to keep you watching one of those boats all the way around. But I think you can pick up on the highlights, like the show building elements here and then the waterfall like here and this little trellis. Uh, I think those things are well done uh, throughout. And then here's a little viewing platform, which is, is quite nice. Um, I like this just garden section in the middle with the diagonal bridge here and then the straight bridge on this side. Then there's another smaller bridge over here. Um, just hops this kind of nice little stream in the middle very, very well. And just I, I like the look. Uh, over here we have these two little circular buildings to intersect. So this is the uh, dance hall and then this is a little snack stand on this side. So dance hall has live music and everything, which I do like these um, angled lights on here. I think that's really cool. Um, and then over here we have uh, a couple of uh, larger buildings, uh, some shops and things on the bottom floor. And then in this one is the haunted house. So this is the Hotel uh, Gaston. Um, I didn't actually do this attraction when I was there. It's a walkthrough haunted house, year-round uh, haunted house. And it's supposed to be very good. Um, so uh, well done on the facade for sure. Uh, you can definitely see the little creepier vibe here than compared to the other uh, elements uh, on the other parts and pieces of this uh, so it's uh, it's done very nicely in there all right so that kind of covers this lower area let's continue on just a little bit as we get to this side so um, the next ride here is another static ride unfortunately it's uh, not a ride that exists in the game this is a zero star shape um, it's a pretty menacing looking ride um, it's a big guy uh, I didn't find it that intense um, it, it actually barely inverted. It's kind of like a top scan that's put on a swinging 360 degree arm. Uh, and it looks super, super cool. Great from an off-ride perspective. And maybe I just got it on a bad day, but it didn't do too much for me. But it uh, looks neat here. It's set up uh, facing up top. So this would be these would be the seats up here. And there's the counterweight on the side. And the whole thing loops around while the seats spin and can free rotate. Um, there's a pretty substantial... Um, shop and arcade and, and little dining area in here and then this whole white building section is a bunch of little game stalls and all sorts of things so in uh leesburg and this was a thing that we saw a lot in europe but not as prevalent as leesburg is it was everywhere here uh, a lot of the game stalls you can win um giant candy bars or uh chip bags like crisps and uh you Kind of almost like gambling where you put some money down on certain numbers and then if it stopped on your numbers within a certain uh, distance you would win the, the prize and i actually did win um two kilograms of chocolate while i was there uh, it was a lot to look around but it wasn't a good time uh so that is good memories there i think my i won in uh, i think this building here so i can remember right this white building um so it's a neat recreation when you can go pick out the specific buildings that you did stuff in and uh, you can uh, see all that kind of detail. Uh, so here's a little uh, dark ride inside. What I like about this is there's a cutaway so you can actually see some of the different scenes in here. Um, kind of going throughout and you can see the characters that he's got uh, set up in here uh, too. So nicely done. Lots of good little detail there. And using these uh, scenery pieces for the... Um, uh, the slide, uh, the in-game slide ride uh, for uh, just scenic elements. I think that looks really nice. Uh, here's another scrambler on this end and then a uh, rainbow um, uh, ride here. And then over on this side, we have the disco. So uh, this was one of the older disco rides in the world, I believe. 
um, but it's still looking pretty good there. This kind of sits on the diagonal here, so there's some choices that are that he had to make. And this is one of the challenge of recreations that I don't particularly like these, uh, or to build them myself, is you have to make some changes for your realism versus what you can and can't do in the game, and uh, just some changes and things for looks, and sometimes it's not always the best choice, but I think this one looks fine. Um, really, really loving this log flume station. Um, so it's a circular station, so you load while the boats continuously move around. Or actually, not anymore. They now go through the center, I believe. Um, but their log flume is pretty iconic. It's a giant log flume, and it does have this cool little boat ride in the middle, uh, which I think is a neat use of space in the retaining or the retention pond in here uh, with the little uh, boat building on the side here. So this uh, log flume ride goes up the side of the mountain and then goes all the way through this area. So because of the recreation and to get it to fit in the right spots, it's probably way longer than it actually is in real life. Um, utilizing some uh, bits here like the diagonals, which, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a certain aesthetic choice. Um, it's a little disappointing that you don't have the water going through here, but to be honest, I would take the diagonal over being able to have the water. So I, I'm on board with this. I know back when the park came out, this was a little bit polarizing, but I, I'm a fan. And I do like having the, uh, 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 the wooden coaster track underneath of it for the catwalk all around. just makes it look a little more beefy. Um, I kind of advocate that in my log flumes as I build them. And actually, in our hacking park, if you've been following that series, um, we will be doing the log flume next. And uh, we will be doing something similar to that. So... Um, stay tuned for that. Um, so the actual final drop sequence on this one is they're pretty much back to back, this drop and then this drop. But again, the spatial requirements kind of have this stretched out. We have another bit of diagonal here. So a, a choice to make it work. Um, and this is what we have to deal with. But I think it looks okay. Uh, not, not the worst. So we come up the side here. Uh, like we said, there's the mountain half or the hill. I guess on this side, and uh, there are two giant escalators up the hill, so here is one of them on this side, and then the other one is underneath this gray canopy on this side uh, as we head up the hill. Um, so we're looking at a couple of different rides that are no longer here. So this uh, um, launch tower and this uh, launch tower are all both no longer there, I believe. Uh, up here, we've uh, since been replaced with a uh, Gerslauer Skyfly, uh, where you can rotate the uh, the wings and flip yourself upside down. Uh, but this guy here is still um, existing. This is a tilt whirl under a pretty nice little ornate structure. Uh, again, this one is well done. So a lot of these circular structures I'm a fan of. So like this guy and the um, the log flume one down here too. Um, there's a couple of play areas up here. Uh, this is now a much larger play area. Um, and then this Ferris wheel, I believe, is still there, just relocated. Uh, nice little SKF theming. Uh, also, that was the sponsor for the ride. Um, and then uh, this tower was kind of neat just because Leesburg Banan wrapped around it, uh, but it is not there any longer either. I do like this little hop up and over the uh, log flume here. Um, and then as we come through, we have our Spreeman Swing. Uh, which was added uh, a little uh, a little while ago. This is one of the earlier big screaming swings, so one of the first in Europe, I believe, um, after Dorp Parks. Um, but uh, Leesburg Banat has this huge triple helix here, and uh, this sits nicely over top of it. And is kind of neat, depending on which way you face on the ride, whether you go out over the cliff and look down low or go up the other direction. Um, and uh, so that continues along back over to here. Um, and I am leaving Leesburg but on, on purpose. We're going to get back to that. Uh, as you continue through here, kind of cut across where the two escalators cut. So there's a lift and then a break and then another lift up to the, the main space up here. Uh, on the front side here, we have this uh, great just hill with lots of landscaping and ponds and uh, this windmill and just other uh, little details. It's kind of just a lot of dirt trails and things that you can kind of wander and get a little lost in. Just nice to relax and explore. And then up on the hill is the really large Ferris wheel. This is pretty iconic. You can see it from all over um, Gothenburg uh, as you're walking up to this park. Uh, so really well done uh, on the recreation on that one. It's a shame that it can't go. Um, it would have been neat to see that um, fully recreated there. But 
nice relaxing ride interior air conditioning cars uh, so that's a nice break too if it's hot outside especially all right so let's go back and take a look at the coasters because these are the two best coasters in the park in my opinion um, so Leesburg Banan has this absolutely gorgeous station which uh, he's done a cutout for in here the station has actually since been refurbished it was refurbished uh, just before our trip last year so in early 2019 and looks beautiful inside uh, and then we also have these really great just architectural buildings on the on the front uh, really nice and detailed and then also up underneath there is a fantastic little restaurant um, some excellent Swedish meatballs and uh, lots of good food there it's uh, railroad themed so you can sit in a little train car uh, as you uh, eat and then you can hear the kind of rumble of the coaster going overhead uh, through the station which I really do enjoy um, so let's uh, wait on this guy to go so this is a classic Schwarzkopf coaster uh, 1988 I believe so it's uh, getting up there in years but not too too bad um, and it really runs well um, despite the age and it is a massive massive coaster so it's got a big lift hill up the up the mountainside and not one particularly large drop but it just kind of keeps on going uh, lots of these uh, little helixes, and you can kind of see here it's you've got this, you know, figure eight plus another loop here up at the top, and then this big triple helix here um, utilizes the supports really well, and then just interacts with a lot of the other rides like the swing here and the launch tower here. Now a lot of those came after this coaster was in place, uh, so it's it's been neat to see the park build around it uh, over time. Uh, so here as it loops down and around. A uh, good choice of the mine train cars. Uh, the coaster does have this little uh, locomotive front car on it, so I think this was kind of the smart choice for this, even though it doesn't have the sprites for the banks corner. Uh, but I think this is the right choice for the ride. Uh, so here we kind of see it keep wrapping around, and then there's a little brake run here, uh, which I don't think he has added in. I'm guessing we're using continuous circuit. Would have been nice to see this as not uh, with block sections, but you don't want to slow it down too much. This is another instance of, um, unfortunately, difficulty with recreations. This is a long straight bit and definitely doesn't exist on the real one. Um, so it's a little bit of a shame to see that kind of distance, but it also helps to fit it properly since this uh, hill does very kind of smartly go over the log flume right there. It fits in just, just so. So it's got to be exactly right if you want it to, to work properly. And then if you continue on up the escalator, you get to this big building on top of the, the uh, uh, mountain. So first thing here is Atmosphere, which actually started life as a big observation tower and then was since uh, redone and relaunched as a gyro drop from Intamin. Um, really good drop tower, especially being up on top of the hill. You can see all over when you go up. And then you have a great drop down into the building with the smoke and everything all around. You know, so it's a pretty great ride and um, definitely worth worth the quick trip on. But the real star of the show up here is Helix, uh, which was new for 2015 or 16, I think. Um, or probably a little bit later than that, actually. But um, really cool building here with the green roof. Uh, a little bit boxy, but that's how the real thing is. It's uh, very kind of brutalist almost in its architecture. A lot of just interesting angles and concrete and everything like that. Um, but this is a massive ride. So this is a uh, mock rides uh, coaster. Uh, two launches and follows the terrain. Uh, this was initially intended to be a mega coaster that had a huge hill and a big drop up off the mountainside. Pretty uh, in your face, I would say but uh, they since revised that a couple of times and then decided they wanted a launch coaster instead, which um, in my opinion was the better choice, I would say, uh, and has a pretty substantial length to it also. So it's a seven inversion ride, two launches, um, really hugs the train and then just interacts with a whole bunch of the other rides and attractions around the park. Um, this is probably a top five coaster for me of all the coasters I've ridden. Um, I really really love this ride it is a great coaster and um you know it's it's an excellent excellent ride so let's take a look uh you start by dropping right out of the station and into an inversion pretty unique and uh, pretty exciting uh, way to start the ride um as we wrap around a tree that they adjusted the layout to save and then we launch into the first uh, uh, second inversion here uh, a roll and then we go down the mountainside and up into this pretty substantial norwegian loop 
this inversion was first found on Speed Monster in Norway and Tusenfrud. Uh, we come out of that into uh, first an airtime hill, and then a zero G roll, and then a helix wrapping around Leesburg Banan, and then we're going to cut uh, over and under the log flume and into launch number two. Launch number two goes through this inverted top hat element, which is a pretty cool thing with a lot of hang time. A little bit more airtime here, another dive off the mountain, kind of a final one there as it rolls up through this kind of S snaking bend up the lift or up the mountainside and then through the roll and into the brakes. So excellent, excellent coaster. Um, a pretty good recreation here um, since it's just kind of all over the place. I, I kind of feel like just looking at the space here that this was the first thing that was built and then you kind of made the rest of it fit around it, which I think is fair because I'd rather see this layout be correct than any of the other ones. Um, so I think it's well done uh, there and kind of well well thought out that that would be the one to, um, to take precedent. So that's our park. Let's take a look at the outside here. Uh, there's a little bit of exterior work, not a ton. So we have the uh, uh, this building on the side with the working uh, elevators. Uh, so this is a pretty iconic building uh, on the other side here with these sort of three big towers that are interconnected by the bridges. And then uh, this one on the side with the uh, bridge that runs across to the stadium in here. Uh, <clears throat> liking these light fixtures, they're a little be beefy, uh, but uh, I think they're well done. Uh, so this is really, really cool. So uh, this is the Universium uh, little museum here. Um, look at these um, planets on the side here, sort of pixel art uh, on the side of the building. Just super, super well done and uh, done at angles too. So when you go this way, you can see in. And then when you turn this way, you can, you can see all these on the side. So really clever. Uh, one of my favorite things on the map. Um, done super super well and then lots of just little theming bits in here through the little play area with the dinosaur and then there's a lift on this side that takes uh, you up back to the uh, the park and then here's some uh, other just shops and things we have our sort of cliched cutaway um, hotel and and flats and shops and things like that um, you know not my favorite I almost wish it would have gone back another one um, but I like that at least the facade is there, but it would have been nice to get a little bit more depth to those because they just look so thin on the side. I mean, fully aware that they're cutaways, but it would have been nice to keep that uh, pulled apart. And then just going further down, here's another uh, little, uh, uh, what I'm assuming is a hotel or an apartment block. And then uh, this uh, parking deck on this side, and then another set of uh, all of these elements here. And then on this side, we have our back entrance to the park because the park's got a couple of entrances across uh, the area. Uh, so definitely well done there. And uh, some little service buildings and things up in here. Nice uh, use of the colored trees here to sort of uh, set this in a, a certain season and uh, just make it look really nice. Um, kind of adds a splash of color to the landscaping that uh, is very saturated, is very green. Um, I think this green is probably the right one to choose for a helix. Um, it's just, I've never been a huge fan of this green in the game. It's very saturated. Um, so it, it definitely stands out when you zoom out a little bit here. But, um, you know, well done uh, for the whole thing. Uh, and <clears throat> it's pretty easy to see why this one spotlight. I mean, it's uh, cool for me to look through this having visited the park and be able to pick out all those uh, particular buildings and shops and rides and things like that. Uh, seeing the sacrifices that had to be made to get things to fit properly, um, I think I can understand all of those. Um, so definitely a clear spotlight winner. Um, and it's amazing because uh, Lugum followed this park up with Grönland, another Swedish theme park, um, in uh, like a year or two uh, just after this one. And that one is a further step up in quality from here. Uh, another spotlight winner uh, on new elements. So we will review that one here at some point soon uh, and check that one out because it is uh, just a fantastic uh, park also in its own right. But I uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, video of Leesburg. And uh, if you've been to the park, let me know. Let me know what you think. Uh, like I said, it's one of my favorite parks and I would love to go back. Uh, hopefully that can happen in the next couple of years, perhaps. But uh, until next time, thank you very much for watching. If you have a uh, park that you'd like me to review, feel free to leave it in the comments, and I will have a look uh, and add it to my ever-growing queue. 
Uh, we will be back with more perk reviews and some uh, hacking tutorials and all that uh, fun stuff here coming very soon. Uh, so until next time, thank you very much, and uh, enjoy your evening.